How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch back with another review. Today is a game called Manticore Galaxy on Fire, which has been on mobile platforms, but this isn't strictly a port and was built for the Nintendo Switch. So bear that in mind. Is it worth your hard earned cash? Let's find out in the review. So let's get into the story. As the player, you're recruited as a pilot by the mercenary carrier Manticore and the crew are investigating an intergalactic conspiracy. Now you're thrust into this investigation to try and understand what caused an event known as the Shattering. Now this event has caused pain and suffering within the sector and the story is voice acted, which is a massive thumbs up in my book. It gets you as the player more involved in what's going on rather than having to read text boxes all the time. The fate of the galaxy is in the balance here and you as the player are thrust into trying to save it by facing pirates, other rivals, and cutthroat mining companies. Now, I quite enjoyed the story. I liked all the characters being voice acted throughout, of which there's around two hours worth to note. The AI in the ship has a personality all of her own and likes to make sure you don't take too many risks. That just made me do the opposite. It must be a reverse psychology thing. Now, if I were to have one disappointment here is I wish they had a little bit more backstory to each of the characters. They're not quite fleshed out enough for me. It would have been great to have built more memorable characters throughout the universe to draw me in and have an attachment to them. There's a wing coming. No sign of Reed Slavic. In terms of audio, I've already spoken about the voice acting here, which is quite impressive throughout. I like the way the characters sound in, adding a lot more life to the characters themselves. Each of the bosses are also voice acted, each sound menacing in their own sort of way, to the point where I just wanted to blast their ships and take them down. The audio within the dogfights sound good, laser beams firing off and rockets from your ship being launched, but I could have done with the explosions sounding more grandeur, more explosive. I wanted that satisfaction of the grand explosive noises, but I was left a little wanting in this department. The sound of the guns though is great, it sounds like you have some heavy artillery firing out from that ship. I also did like the backing music as it felt dramatic and kept the flow moving. In terms of visuals and performance then, let's start off by saying I was impressed that this game ran so smoothly at 60 frames per second, while still looking rather good in the graphical department. The ships themselves all look respectable enough on a big TV but I also loved playing this one on the move. The camera stays just behind the ship and it's a shame that we couldn't have a sort of a first person mode here. The backgrounds also look really nice and detailed and it was fun exploring some space stations or navigating around them whilst in the midst of a dogfight. In terms of gameplay then, ever since I was a kid I was fascinated with space flight or just flight on Earth something about the adrenaline of it all and I'm sure this is all probably down to watching Top Gun or Star Wars at an early age. What could be better than taking to the skies with games such as Wing Commander or Star Fox? Now there are others out there but they're the ones that stick in my memory and truth be told I believe space flight based sci-fi games are difficult to get right and there have been many poor games within this genre. I'm happy to say though that Manticore does a respectable job, it does a lot right and it offers something for everybody. First and foremost controlling the is a simple affair using the left analog to move the craft left and right up and down and diagonally and the right stick is used for boosting your ship slowing it down while also performing aileron rolls if you move it left or right you can invert the controls if you wish sadly though there are no motion controls here Trigger ZR is used to fire your main weapon, either a laser beam or shotgun type plasma weapon. And of course for your secondaries such as missile, you'd need to use the opposite Trigger ZL. Then R can be used to switch between equipped primary weapons. I was pleased with the controls, they felt tight on the switch and I appreciate playing these games and having physical buttons. The use of HD rumble is a good addition to get you more immersed into the action. And I certainly enjoyed this game a lot in handheld. There are a number of missions which take you over 35 locations and to complete the main story you're looking at around 8 hours of gameplay. Each mission starts with you having to complete a certain task such as protecting a convoy from pirates, protecting the manticore itself from drones or just getting into a dogfight and taking out a bunch of pirate foes. There's some time trial stuff in here as well. Dogfights are rather fun with targets being displayed by little red dots on the HUD. You then have to manoeuvre your ship to each target and once in view your targeting system will turn red when they are in range and this is where you let loose firing your weapons until the foe is no more. I found these battles to be quite fun but rather easy although you can change the difficulty if you prefer 
for a stiffer challenge. My issue was most of the AI would do the same thing in that they would fly towards you, you'd pull off a dodge, then fly towards you again, and I never felt like I was in any critical danger, or that feeling where you're on the edge of your seat. Every time I'd been shot so that my shields were down, I'd just speed away, recharge, and come back into the fight. I wanted to experience homing missiles chasing me, or bullets ricocheting and damaging my craft so that it was crippled, requiring me to dock for repairs. I wanted to feel the danger of being in these dogfights and the adrenaline rush associated with it, but sadly, I never really got that feeling. As I say, flight feels fine and feels rather quick when in flight, but I wanted more. At the end of each mission, you'll have to take out the bosses, which can give you that nail-biting feeling at times, but it is rare. They do act like bullet sponges here. And while I did enjoy the boss fights, for many, they may last a little too long. Now, once the mission is complete, there is a nice warm down. Think of it like going to the gym, having a 30-minute treadmill run, and then having a light jog to warm down those aching muscles. Here, after your mission is complete, you get to fly around the area with a little drone to explore, and the drone will alert you to any nearby loot. The drone disappears when enemies appear so it doesn't get trashed and you can take the foes down whilst continuing your quest for loot. Most of it ranges from plans for upgrades or ship parts which you can then use to upgrade your ship in between missions. The upgrade system is simple enough and there's nothing complicated about it. Upgrade your guns, missiles and other parts of your ship bit by bit to make it stronger for the later missions. You can also unlock more ships as you progress through the game. The menu is nicely laid out where you can check your lore categories which includes species, pirate enemy ships and many more. And you can go to your hangar to upgrade your ship and its weapons but you will require fragments in order to do so. You can also check your progress and the galaxy map where you can just choose to explore for bits you may have missed. One one of the main criticisms of the series on mobile platforms are all the microtransactions within the game, which is always going to cause a friction between players who feel paying a one-off amount for the game should suffice, and those who don't mind paying to get ahead. Personally, I'm glad they're not in the Switch game at all and would appreciate it if it stays that way for all games on the Nintendo Switch in future. So, so far, so good, you would think. The game's quite long, it's solid enough, but this didn't stop me from thinking it could have been much more. There was something missing, it didn't really grab me by the scruff of the neck and make me think, wow. The game just felt a little bit bland at times and lacking character, which for me was a real shame, as I had greater expectations. That's not to say I didn't enjoy myself, because I certainly did, and there were moments which I enjoyed a lot. In terms of value, the game cost $20 or £17.99 in the UK, and if you're happy with over 8 hours of story missions, then this will be for you. In terms of replay value, I was done once I'd complete the story mode, and while you can explore other areas for loot, there wasn't anything that really drew me back in. There's also no free roam or a survival mode, which would have been more compelling. This is solely a one player game, and that's fine if that's all you want, which many will. As a one player campaign, you'll get your money's worth, but many will move on once it's done. It's a shame there wasn't more added like an online mode to battle against friends, but maybe I'm asking for too much. In terms of my verdict, Manticore Galaxy on Fire will probably not be able to shake its mobile roots. It is a rather solid entry into the sci-fi space shooter genre on the Switch. Everything's solid enough and there's something for everyone, dogfights, boss battles, and some calm exploration parts. For me, it was missing that extra ingredient, that bit of magic to make it truly essential. The sound is good, the visuals are nice, and the story is okay, but rather uninspiring with characters needing more development. Put it all together and you get just that, a solid game which is probably just about worth your hard earned cash if you're into these types of games, and one that I'm sure you'll enjoy if that's the case. A 7.5 then, out of 10. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed this review and if you enjoy our work, please hit that thumbs up button, really lets us know whether we're doing a good job or not. And if you're a new watcher, then why not consider subscribing for more reviews and gameplay videos like this one. Thank you to all of our existing watchers and subscribers. We hit 9,000 today. Unbelievable stuff. Thank you so much for all of your support. It really does mean a lot to everybody. And lastly, everyone, if you want to leave us a comment, feel free to do so. We love hearing from you, love replying, and we really enjoy it when the community gets involved. My name is Juan Romero from Switchwatch. I really hope you did enjoy this review. I look forward to seeing you, of course, on the next one. Take care.